Principal from Owings Mills, Maryland, live, it's... Coming through here, coming through. I just love Little League, don't you? Got a seat there, Wanda? Oh, yeah. All right, folks, have no fear. The Johnsons are here, all right? Hey, buddy, what's the score? Four to three Giants in Woo. the fourth. Hey, honey, what's that coach's name? Henny, Harry, Harry? Harold. Harold, hey, Harold! You got Freddie Jr. pitching, don't you? You don't? No wonder we're losing this damn thing. Freddie's up second this inning. Great, we're gonna bust this game wide open, yeah. huh? Let's go, Pirates. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. boom. Let's go, Pirates. <laughs> Uh, who's this guy who's up this kid here? Ah, the Rocky somebody. Clay. His name's Clay Smith. Rock Clays. They both come from the ground, yeah. don't they? <laughs> Has he got a sister named Topsoil? <laughs> Just kidding, pal. All right. Ball four. You know, something Freddie is going to kill this pitcher. He's throwing volleyball. Oh, here comes Freddie. All right, here we go. <laughs> You can hit this guy. Hey, you think your kid can steal second? My Freddy needs some RBIs. Yeah, what? Rocky stole second. His name is Clay. All right, way to go, Rocco. All right, here you go, Freddy. This is it. This is it. Now don't tense up. Back up in the box. Choke up on the bat a little. A little more. Just a little bit more. Right, too. Hey, not that much. Hey, look at this. Freddy's hitting 455 with runners in scoring position, 470 against lefties on Tuesday night games. Hey, the manager's going out to talk to the pitcher. All right, all right, here we go. They're worried, Freddy, they're worried. Just a little delay to get you nervous there. Don't listen to them, don't get you thinking. No thinking out there, Freddy. All right, remember, a hit ties it up. A home run wins it, it's all up to you. You're the only one that can do it, it's on your head. But don't think about it. Just relax, Freddy, all right? Freddy! 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 Hey, let's get a wave going. Huh? How about a wave? Here we go. Yeah. Yeah. These people got no team spirit. Yeah, tell me. All right, Freddy, this is it. Give it a long ride downtown, big guy! All right. Hey, Harold, you're putting too much pressure on the kid. He's only nine. Give him a break, for God's sake. He's adopted. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. I'm Ranger Stanley, and I'm so glad that you all and Miss Smithson could come out here and see me and my animal friends at the Nature Center. Now, that's right, just, just sit down there on the floor, ga gather around, because I'm going to introduce you to some wonderful new friends. Now, my first friend here is a small creature who likes to chirp a lot. Yes, that's, yes, a cricket, right. Now, you all sit very still, and I'm going to pass the cricket around. Now, when you look at, no, don't open the, no, don't open the lid. What's your name, little boy? Johnny? Miss Smith and Johnny just ate our cricket. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I've never seen a human extend his tongue that far before. Just snatch that cricket right out of the air. Well, let's just move on to snakes, shall we? Now, who here can tell me what snakes eat? No, Johnny, you don't find Twinkies in the woods. <laughs> well, then I'll tell you. Snakes eat crickets and, and grasshoppers and mice 
and 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 uh, worms. And and as a matter of fact, if you look over in that glass case right there, you'll see what we like to call a garter snake. Now the garter snake is perfectly harmless. And Johnny, don't open the lid. No, Johnny, don't take. Johnny, put it back. Put it back in there. Close the lid. Leave it alone. Well, of course he did. You bit him first. <laughs> well, we have an active group here, don't we, Miss Smith? <laughs> Well, perhaps we should leave Mr. Garter Snake alone. I have an idea. Why don't we try something different? In that next glass case, you'll see what we like to call a timber rattlesnake. <laughs> now, who would like to be my helper, Johnny? <laughs> Why don't you just reach both hands into that glass case? Well, we didn't have any trouble with the Garter Snake, did we? Yes, Miss Missy? Oh, I'm sorry that... Well, boys and girls, it seems that the class has to leave right now. But thank you all for coming out, and we'll see you next time here at the Nature Center. Bye-bye. tips for you single men. My topic today, crisis management. Today we're talking about that day, and sad to say it's inevitable. The day when your mother finally takes you aside and says, son, no more laundry. Oh, sure, it's painful. And you'll go through a period of denial. But after a couple of months, your laundry will turn to compost, even if it has been scotch guarded. At this point, you have to take action. Now, there's one big mistake you must take pains to avoid. It makes no sense to ask your ex-wife to help out with this ugly story. <laughs> Don't make that call. My ex was positively vicious. You'd think I'd ask for the moon. I mean, she's doing laundry anyway. What's a couple extra loads? No, you'll just have to face the hard truth like a man and learn to do your laundry yourself. Boys, you'll have to come here to your local laundromat where they have plenty of washers and dryers. First, the obvious question, which machine is which? Well, the washing machines are the ones that fill up with water. My personal favorite, the Wasco Mat Junior 74 double loader. Sort of a turbo model the one with the space age instructions. Now, you'd have to be a rocket engineer to understand these instructions your first time, which is why it can be such a stressful situation. But remember, there are usually lots of women in a laundromat. You are literally sitting in an ocean of laundry experience. So if you're confused, don't be afraid to ask for help. And if you ask just right, your trouble may be over. Something like this. Excuse me, I've never done laundry before. Eleanor always did that. May she rest in peace. <laughs> and I'm a little confused. Tell me, is one bar of soap enough to do a large load? <laughs> With any luck at all, a kind-hearted stranger will do your laundry for you while you play electronic foosball at the arcade next door. All done, Mrs. Hennessy? All done, Sammy. Thanks, Mrs. Hennessy. You're a sweetheart. <laughs> well, see you next time with more tips for the single man. That's right, Catholic. You were wrong, and that's 25 more blame points for you, and you're well on your way to a guilty conscience and victory! It's game show action like you've never seen before. It's the game show where winning means having to say you're sorry. It's It's My Fault, the program loaded with anxiety. All right, Jews and Catholics, listen up. All right, I have a young man who's having to hitchhike his way to his private tennis lessons. Oh, my God! It's my fault. And the Jews are tied to Catholics. All right. 
Okay, all right, everybody, settle down, settle down, please. One more question. One more question, and the team to blame will earn the guilty conscience and win the game. I see some relatives coming over this weekend for a visit, but the house isn't quite clean enough, is it? We could have done a better job, couldn't we? Oh, I should have changed the vacuum cleaner back. The angst is killing me. The tablet win, and you will be punished. It's my fault. Coming this season to PBS, if you miss it, you only have yourself to blame. House Committee's Oversight Subcommittee and Undersight Task Force made its report today, and so the question in question has been tabled by the chair as well as by the most honorable certain high boy and certain shipper ropes. <laughs> Far be it from me, however, a humble news slave to infer, impinge, or otherwise cast aspersions at this august body, which pales in comparison to Playboy's august body, now on the news stand. <laughs> <clears throat> and so the motion was moved and seconded, and even third and fourth, the subsequent amendment to the fifth was deep sixth, and the dispersal of Politico's expeditiously proceeded to four winds, which is to say that Washington will soon be rid of the elected factotums and major domos ex officio as they scattered the plot privately even more down the state public, heel hauling the electorate in manners heretofore unimagined, if not wholly unregurgitated. <laughs> How fitting, then, to close with a quote from the Roman parliamentarian syllabus who wrote, Flatulus pugnatius crotum reportatum non nobis sed alius in hoc signo winces, which loosely translated means, shut her down, Luke, I think we're pumping mud. <laughs> this is Brian Wilson Madison reporting. Thank you. that the theory taught by my client in the classroom does not conflict with the story of creation as told in the Bible. From the pages of the century's most dramatic court case, Creation versus Evolution. This man refuses to accept the evidence as presented by my expert witnesses. The Scopes trial comes to life in Inherit the Breeze with Max Nicholas as the judge and Justin Hargrove as Clarence Darrow. Do you really believe that the Earth was created in six days, Mr. Bryan? <laughs> Mr. Bryan, Mr. Bryan! And as William Jennings Bryan, Pee Wee Herman. That's my name, Mr. Darrow. Don't wear it out, okay? <laughs> Do you think that this six-day period could have occurred over millions of years? Oh, that's so funny. I forgot to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> the Bible was on trial. I'm going to ask you to step down from the stand, Mr. Bryan, so that the court may listen to more enlightened testimony. Oh, yeah? Well, why don't you make me? <laughs> Can you accept the fact that you are descended from a monkey? Oh, yeah, I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> you are descended from a monkey. Oh, yeah, I know you are, but what am I? <laughs> Great you performances brings you the trial that shook the nation to its religious foundations. Don't be a monkey's uncle and misinherit the breeze. Sunday at 10. I know you are, but what am I? <laughs>
much of a messy syntax case, and I wanted to get out of the city. The Southern Comet was scheduled to depart at 8.22 on track six. I planned to be on it. The name's Taco. Johnny Taco. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. The beauty of the sun and the moon are in your face. Listen, Gunga Din. The number of the subject determines the number of the verb. Beauty is a singular noun. It should be... The beauty of the sun and the moon is in your face. Read this, Swami. Things like that bother me. I was traveling light, except for a heavy heart. A dizzy redhead named Jingles tossed me over for a slick banker with short hours and a long sedan. I went to my locker to get a fresh shirt. I found someone else's dirty laundry. It was my old pal, Tim, the puppet. He played his last lead in Punch and Judy. Witnesses were as scarce as the passive voice in a telegram. The murderer's method was as silent as the pee in pneumonia. Why would anyone lay a hand on Tim? And what was Tim trying to write? M-I? Initials? Or was he just a bad speller trying to say hi? Hmm. Just then, an angel appeared. She was a little bit of heaven packaged in auburn hair and blue eyes. Her hand gave me a hunch she was killing something more than time. The dame had gotten to me like a well-turned phrase. When I went to freshen up, I realized that someone had gotten to Kilda. The flotsam and jetsam of someone's twisted idea of water polo. Hilduff was waterlogged, but he wasn't ready for Davy Jones' locker yet. Tim, now Kilduff, just like a newlyweds checkbook, it didn't add up. Hilduff and I were sharing a cup of hot java when I noticed white fingerprints around his little neck. White paint? When he came around, he sang like a barbershop quartet. Suddenly, all the pieces fit together. The white paint the M.I., and the quiet way that the crimes were committed, it made sense. Mines. It had to be mines. Those vermin of the streets who abuse language in the worst possible way, through neglect. It was another dirty episode in the long history of gang wars between mines and puppets. Puppets are more popular than mines, and mines resent it. Unwilling to lash out verbally, they respond with violence. It was as much a part of the city's history as corrupt elections, traffic jams, and poor diction. But how to catch them? I had a hunch. Walking the beat taught me the one thing a mime can't resist is a good crowd, no matter where. It wasn't the Palladium, but it was standing room only. Freeze, sister! You're on the wrong side of the tracks. I had a few questions. She wouldn't talk. I had my collar, but nothing could bring Tim back. Hilduff developed hydrophobia. The Southern Comet had left without me. Sometimes this business stinks worse than old loafers, but Grammar and I are partners, and we have a deal for life. Now, if I could just get my thesaurus back from Jingles, I could call the day a success, or a coup, or a triumph.
Welcome to MPT's Baseline. I'm Brian Wilson. My guests tonight are Jim and Tammy Baker. <laughs> who, I'm sure you'll agree, are about as base as it gets. <laughs> Jim, Tammy, you've been in the headlines for quite a while now. Do you think the hoopla will ever die down? <laughs> we sure hope not. <laughs> We're booked on the Carson Show, a Bob Hope special, and there's even talk of a condom commercial, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, your uh, parents should have used one. Uh, thank you. What? No, never mind. Uh, it seems as if there have been a lot of stories like yours in the news lately. Uh, well, yes. In fact, Tammy and me are getting a condo in Aspen near Gary and Lee Hart for two weeks in August. <laughs> also, we got real friendly with Jeff and Carol Levitt. <laughs> Carol and me are just Kmart mothers at heart. <laughs> Why, Jeff and Carol be there in our theme park. Uh, theme park. <laughs> yes, sir, e Bob. We're talking about a theme but refuse to be contrived. <laughs> I wonder if you'd care to comment on the rumor that Max Factor and Maybelline were picking up your legal expenses. <laughs> about the allegations that you're gay, Jim? Why, shoot, Brian, I'm always in a good mood. <laughs> but please, Jesus, Tammy and me just love everybody. <laughs> we just didn't realize you shouldn't love everybody one at a time. <laughs> oh. ask you this, would either one of you uh, consider being missionary? No, no, no. She gets claustrophobic lest she's on top. <laughs> and speaking oh. of that, in fact, Ryan, we vowed to abstain from the S word until we're forgiven. Hell's bell, Jim. There won't be a D battery left in Palm Springs. <laughs> Uh, Jim, Tammy, where do you two see yourselves, uh, say, a year from now? Well, Tammy Faye is thinking about selling Mary Kay cosmetics. <laughs> now, I'm hoping to teach a little Bible school and maybe open up a Cadillac dealership for Jesus. Oh, now, Jim, or don't you forget that magazine article I'm writing called Praise the Lord and Taylor. <laughs> Fortunately, we're out of time now. Thanks for being with us on Baseline. Oh, honey, I got my ear caught. Oh, honey, you're caught oh. in the diamond, please. Oh, I hate when it gets a load out of there, dearie. Oh.
most apart you really can. We are Democrats. Democrats. We want to be your president. Thanks, Donna. All right, the field is now wide open. May lightning strike us if you think we've lied. So Gary is a rat. We are nothing like that. We may be dogs. But after all, we, we all are It's your chance to get involved in MPT's Electronic Town Meeting and ask Governor Schaefer about the issues that affect you. Has the success bug bitten you? Stay tuned for a look at the heroes of business who go beyond excellence, the super achievers. Presentation of crabs is made possible by Baltimore Spice. Maker.